Okay, today we're going to be learning about conditional constructs. And the idea of this is that you're going to be able to use these constructs in order to create what's known as control flow in your program. So first of all, a conditional construct is just a way to make the computer do different things based on the answer to a yes or no question. So this is a very basic flow chart of a construct. Um, you start the program, there's a yes or no question. If the answer is yes, you perform action one. If the answer is no, you perform action two. And then both of those flow to, so after the action one is finished, it terminates. After action two is finished, it terminates there. So it's just the conditional construct is the diamond block with the two actions, and that's it. That's the construct. So it's a question, and then the action's based on the answer to that question. Now, it's super important to be able to do this because it allows a computer to make a decision based on a user input. In other words, it makes your program responsive. So if you, if you are a programmer and you're writing a program, you want to make sure that people can either play the program if it's a game or just use it to like edit documents, for instance, or um, view different th uh, versions of the website. So for instance, Google Docs, email, Jupyter Grades, and especially video games all have conditional constructs in them in order to allow the users to make decisions um, that your program can respond to by performing different actions. Okay, and we saw this in the flowchart for the video game design. Was the G key pressed? Yes, change the weapons, and so on. Okay, so in real life, a con conditional construct would look like the, the intersection problem, where we approach the intersection, we ask ourselves, is there a cross symbol? If yes, go ahead and cross the street. If no, keep waiting for the light. Okay, and then we end. The, this right here is actually a loop, and we're going to see that a little bit later on. But the conditional construct is the diamond shape with the two actions based on the yes or no branches of the, of the um, flowchart. Okay, in Python, this is what a conditional statement looks like. So let's break this down step by step. The first part of the conditional construct is a conditional statement. So it's the, the keyword if followed by some sort of statement that can be evaluated as true or false. So if five greater than four, then it's followed by the action that's performed if that conditional statement is true. So the action that will happen here is print, it is true that five is greater than four. Then the last part of this very simple conditional construct is if the statement was not true, it's going to perform another action. And we use the keyword else here and we use a colon here. So we say print, it is false that 4 is greater than 5. So we know that as this program runs, this first thing is true, so line 2 is going to be triggered. And then the program actually ends. Right? So it looks like the two action blocks go right to the end of the program. They each trigger the end, they each terminate the program. Okay? So this is a more complicated um, conditional where you have more than a, f uh, a couple conditions. This is like our problem um, with the movie tickets. So um, I'm going to go to Replit real quick and I'm going to show you what this looks like. Okay, so I made this actually a bit more complicated than what you see on the screen because I, I wanted to um, I wanted to check to see I, I wanted to add a few more conditions in here. So the first thing is if you're younger than 16, it's going to say you are too young to drive. Um, if if you're not younger than 16, it's going to go to another decision block. Okay, are you younger than 17? If so, then you can have a permit. If not, then it's going to go to another decision block. So it's like those chain decision blocks that we saw in the movie ticket price. So if you're younger than 81, um, so I made this sort of an ageist statement. We don't restrict people who are, um, who are older from driving, but I said, whoa, you may be too old to drive. And then if you're younger, if you're below 100, so if you're between 81 and uh, um, 149, it'll print just relax, okay? Otherwise, it will print you can get your license. So actually, so if I said, what is your age? If I said 15, you are too young to drive, okay? If I said, what is your age, 89? It's gonna say, just relax, okay? So I actually made, so if I said 101, it's gonna say, just relax. I actually made a strange program where, the way I modified it, this block never gets printed unless it's 150. We'll start triggering that. So if I said 150, it's going to, um, none of these are going to be triggered 
right? None of the print blocks here are going to be triggered. They're only triggered if the conditional statement is true. And so if I say 150, whoops, right back here, press return, um, it's going to say you can get your license. So it's actually sort of an incorrect program the way that I modified it because that would mean anyone 150 or older, it would say just you can have your license. But you see the, the, um, the response here. So if you have more than one condition you want to check, you start with an if and then you go to elif statements. And then your last one is an else statement, um, which you actually don't need. It just provides the, um, the computer with something um, to run if nothing else, gets, nothing else gets triggered for it. So it doesn't, the else statement doesn't get uh, a condition for it. Okay, let's focus on the syntax for a minute. So um, if you, so for this very simple, um, this was what the original one was. If you have um, an if statement after the conditional statement, notice that there are colons at the end of each of these lines. Okay, if age greater than 16, colon. The colons are absolutely necessary. That tells the program that what comes next on the next line is the action that you want to perform, the process block that you want to use if um, the statement is considered true, okay, if it's evaluated as true by the computer. Notice that lines 3, 5, and 7 all have indentations. That are, those are four um, spaces or the use, it's, it's easier to use the tab and most development environments want you to use the tab key to space. If you put the colon there and then you press return, what you're going to notice is, so here if I go back to replit, if I put a colon here, let's say that I don't have this, oops, um, let's say that I delete this right here, so I'm going to X this out. If I put a colon here at the else, I press return, it's automatically going to bring me to, um, it's going to automatically tab it in. That's how you know you've done it correctly. Okay. Um, now this allows you to answer questions three and four. So pause this video and then come back to it when you've answered them. Okay, finally, um, this, I want to focus on the conditional statements, the statements that can be evaluated as true or false. Okay, so we saw one that was like a greater than and then a less than symbol, but there's actually a bunch of things that you can use here. So if you want to ask the computer a question, is something equal to something else? You would say, you actually use double equal sign. So if you say, uh, four greater than, uh, sorry, is four equal to four, you would say four equal equal four. And this eval is evaluated by the computer as true. If you want to ask the computer if um, two strings are equal to each other, you would also use the equal equal sign. So you say is, he is hello equal to the string goodbye, and it will evaluate this to be false. Okay. If you want to ask the question if two things are not equal to each other, then you use an exclamation point in combination with an equal sign. So four not equal to four, this is evaluated as false. Hello not equal to goodbye, that's evaluated by the computer as true because it is true that those two strings are not equivalent to each other. Okay. Um, if you want to ask if a number is greater than another number, then we all know what this symbol is. 10 greater than 12, this is by the way false. Is a number less than another number? You would use this symbol right here. If you want to ask if one's greater than or equal to, you use the you you write down the symbols in the order in which you say them. Greater than or equal to, right there. Okay. Now to set up a situation where you check to see if um, two conditions are met, um, you could ask a question like. Um, for instance, if you wanted to check and see if a number is between two other numbers. So if you're interested um, in wondering if the number that you received is between two numbers like four and six, you can use an and statement here. So you can say if number greater than four and also number less than six. So that's the way you can set up your conditional statement to check for that. So the use of the and word here, which is a keyword in Python, um, will help you do that. Um, let's say you want to know if uh, it's less than 4 or greater than 6. So what you could do is you could say if number less than 4 or number greater than 10. So you're using an OR condition here. And what an OR does is it says this whole statement is evaluated as true if this part is true or this part is true or both parts are true. Okay, whereas the and is evaluated as true if both this part is true and this part is true. Both, can, both pieces of the conditional statement here have to be met in order for the entire thing to be evaluated as true. 
Okay, whereas this one, one or the other or both are okay, and then it's evaluated as true. So a similar situation happens when you um, want to compare, let's say that you have just a situation here, and actually you wouldn't have, uh, you wouldn't put feet in here. So let's say um, you wanted to check if uh, someone's allowed to ride a roller coaster, for instance, and you have to be older than 16, or let's say that you have to be greater than or equal to 16, um, and your height has to be more than five feet. So you can set up a, so you've gathered information about their age and height, and you can say, if the age is greater than or equal to 16 and their height is greater than five, then you can print something like, you know, you can ride the roller coaster. Um, whereas if you wanna see if one or the other is true, you can say if some, for instance, if you're checking if uh, red or green gives you points in a game, you can say if the color equal equals red or the color equal equals green, then add one to the points. Okay, so here again, the or is allowing that one or the other is true or both, and the and is saying both of them have to be true, both Booleans have to be true in order for the conditional statement to be evaluated as true. Okay, um, one other thing you could do is you can ask um, if a data type is a certain, um, if a data that you're getting in, a piece of data that you're getting in is a certain type. So you can say this keyword type, you can add that around um, the var a variable name. So let's say you have a variable name called item. You say, is the type of the variable item equal to a string? Remember, you use the double equal to sign. That is a question to the computer. Is it equal to? As opposed to a single equal sign, which assigns a value to something. And you could similarly say, is it an int, is it a float, is it a boolean? So for an example of how you would use this in, in code, you could say, okay, um, I stored the string hello world in a variable named word. So the word here refers, refers to the string world. And I say print, um, print the answer to this question. Is the type of data for the thing that's stored in word equal equal to a string? Okay. So um, and the type of word is equal equal to string, so it prints out true. It's not equal to an int, a float, or a boolean, so when I ask it to print out the answer to the question, is the type of word equal equal to int, it will say false, and likewise for float and boolean. Okay, so this information allows you to answer question 5 through 10 on your quiz, so go ahead and answer those questions, um, and then we'll talk all together.